Design Channel. My name is Joey and in today's episode of The Lowdown, we are going to be talking about how small businesses have been coping after the pandemic. So we know that the past year has been difficult for a lot of businesses, but more so for SMEs. Today, we have invited our Regional Sales Director for Small Business, Ras, to give us a lowdown on some of the funding options available for these small businesses and the impact of technology. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a big thumbs up on this video. Hi Ras, so you know we know that especially for the past year it has been difficult for small businesses. So you know we just love to hear what you think about the current situation for small businesses. Have you heard anything from the customers? How are they coping especially from the past year? Firstly, thank you Joey for having me here. And I think the pandemic has pretty much hit every segment, every industry. Um, regardless of size. I mean, the last time we had such a big impact was probably World War II where the whole world had to stop. So it just gives you an idea of how big an impact COVID has had. And it's really hit small businesses very, very hard. If you really think about it, what are the needs of an SMB? It's, it's really digitalization, security, and mobility, right? Which is the same as a large enterprise. But the difference for small businesses is that they don't have the scale, right? They don't have the resources, they don't have an IT department. They don't have the budget, so they don't have the deep pockets of the big organizations, which made it very, very difficult for these organizations to survive, right? But the first thing they needed to do was really look at how they could serve their customers. And that was their first concern, right? The second part was what tools and processes do they need for their own staff, right? How are they going to work, right? And that was a big thing for them in terms of what they needed to change and how they were going to adapt in a new environment. And I think uh, what we saw was you know, there was a shift away from sort of a workplace to a workspace and that's what was the big change for a lot of small organisations. Yeah, I think for a lot of small businesses that is essential but the cost of adoption and really just getting up to speed with like a robust IT system in place has been difficult. So what are some of the options they have? Well, I, I, again, I think a lot of us noticed that you know, the SME, pre-pandemic, the SME industry was growing very quickly. Right. The SME growth was probably surpassing most other, most other segments uh, across the globe. Two thirds of the world's global market is in the SME space. Half of the world's GDP comes from SMEs. It just shows you how big it is, right? And I think governments realized that very, very quickly, which was good because of what that allowed us to do was work with governments and other organizations to really help SMEs stay alive, keep going, invest in technology. Um, some governments provided grants and subsidiary, you know, subsidies, and, et cetera and even training. And here at Cisco, we worked with SMEs, I worked with a lot of SMEs who are really struggling to try and understand what technology they needed. And at Cisco, we created something called Cisco Design uh, over a year ago, pre-pandemic, really a specific set of technologies for small businesses, right? And what we wanted to do was give small businesses you know, that enterprise-grade technology, but for them, right, on a smaller scale that they could use in their industries. And that's something we've done recently. That's great to hear that Cisco have a portfolio just for small businesses. So in terms of that, how do you think these technology and these products can help them achieve their business goals? Great, and I think that the big thing we noticed when a lot of countries went into lockdown, that lack of movement really stopped everyone from sort of progressing. Well, we kind of had this start, well, our growth basically started. Everyone kind of had to stop and think, what do we do next? And the first thing we needed to do was create collaboration between businesses, between people, and that had to be technology. So good example is WebEx, using WebEx as an example to connect with people, connect with your partners, your customers, and that's something we had to do. So technology kind of became a bridge for us. And we saw that sort of move very quickly. And the other thing we learned very quickly was um, during the pandemic, in particular, almost up to 94% of businesses are more reliant on technology than they've ever been. That's a big percentage now, right? Up to 70% are accelerating their digitalization efforts now as a result. So that shows you where their investments are going. So we needed to help businesses make sure they're investing in the right areas and the right technology. Cloud adoption is another big one that really took off in the last year. Uh, a lot of companies and countries, I should say, were really looking and waiting to see how cloud could help right, and wanted to see it play out. They've now accelerated that journey. And what does cloud do for you? Right? Better, you, know, you do cloud, with cloud adoption, not only do you get savings on CapEx, you get easier, you get faster speed, right? You're able to be more nimble and more agile. And that's an advantage to small businesses in particular. It also gave businesses a better visibility. Using technology, using analytics, allowed them to get better access to better data, the right data, and 
make better decisions. And that was a big thing for businesses in particular during the pandemic, trying to figure out where to invest, where to focus and where to grow, right? And how to react. And those are the things we saw very quickly uh, change over the last year. Right, so it gives small businesses the flexibility to get started without any upfront costs. Absolutely, yeah. So once they get started with this, right, and they already have the initial investment, what are some of the options they have to really gain continual investment even if they go along um, in their fourth or fifth year journey? Well, I, I think um, what the businesses need to do is one, to make sure they have an established plan. And as a former CFO, one of the things I always look at is what are the things you need, right? So the, the basics still remain. They're still going to have a strong team. They're going to have a strong plan. Uh, they're going to have a business that's really addressing a need in the market, right? So you've got to understand where that where is that going. Uh, second part is what's their differentiator? How are they going to be different, right? Well, how are they going to compete? Uh, and that's something always you know, businesses are looking at, investors are looking at in particular. Um, and most importantly, it's having a strong team in place, right? Having you know, uh, business leaders, be it the founders, be it whoever is a part of that organization, understanding who they are. You know, if they're credible players, they will be able to get more investment. And even wearing my new hat as a technology leader and as a business leader, what's their digital plan? What are they planning to do with technology? How are they going to use it? Does it make sense, right? And I think one thing I've, I've done a lot of work with, with SMEs over the, over the last sort of 12 months in particular, and you know, I've made this point to them many a time to say, you're investing in technology for two reasons. You're either investing it to fix something in-house, fix a process, be more efficient, or you're investing it to create new markets, open up new opportunities, right? Which one is it? Don't just buy technology for the sake of buying it, but buy it to serve a purpose, right? And that's something uh, that I feel strongly about and Cisco feels strongly about and that's why we're doing a lot of work with SMEs. That's great to hear us. So with your experience as a CFO in the past, do you have any business tips for small businesses? Absolutely. I, I think the first thing is make sure your business is robust and you have a strong IP plan in place. When we did the IDC study uh, a few months ago, one of the things we, we pulled together was a seven step plan, which I think is a really good way to look at your business. Uh, whether you're looking to attract investors or even just to run your business. And the first one is really have a, a three to five year plan. Build out a plan, not short term, but it's a little bit longer. And you can think about what you wanna do, how you wanna do it, build, build in some scenarios. The second part is really think about the, the processes and how you can automate those processes, be it through technology, be it through people. Think about how you wanna do that. The third one is really evaluate the, the right size technologies you need. Don't just buy technology because someone else has bought it. That's not always gonna work, right? Buy technology that you think you need that's going to serve a purpose. The fourth, for me, is probably one of the most important. Invest in digital skills. There's no point having the best technology if you're not using it, right? And that's something that's really important. And when investors come in and, and venture captives come in and look at your businesses, they are going to look at your digital plan. They are going to look at your people to see, are you leading the technology to, to its maximum potential, right? Again, the fifth one for me, uh, again, probably right up there in terms of importance, find the right technology. And that's something Cisco's working really hard on, to be that technology partner, to help businesses thrive and grow. Right? We want to be there throughout that whole journey, not just at the beginning or at the end, but all the way through. Number six is really keeping up with the IP trend. There's no point having a legacy system if it's not going to work and it doesn't work with your, your partners or your, your customers. Keep up to date, and that's really important. And the last one, but not least, most important one, always simplify. Start small, learn, and then scale. I think that's really, uh, those are the tips I would give to any small businesses that are really starting out and really want to grow. I have a more direct question for you, Russ. So we know that a lot of people think that Cisco mostly sell to enterprises, to large companies, but you mentioned that we have a portfolio for small businesses, Cisco designed. So what do you think? Um, is Cisco really more for enterprises or do you think that our small business market is really growing? No, oh, absolutely. And, and I think I realized that when I took on this job and we've done a lot of market analysis of late, um, a lot of companies see Cisco as sort of too big, too expensive and, and too complicated, not for me. Right? And, and that's a fair statement. We, we were very heavily focused on enterprise and that, that makes sense. It was the top end of the market. We were really you know, pioneering, pioneering that technology. But over the last few years, we've really realized that the market potential uh, in the SMB space is big. Like I said earlier, two thirds of the world market is in the SME space, up to half the world's GDP. Uh, these businesses are growing far and wide. Uh, and that's why we created a segment within the company called Small Business, really directed and set up to actually serve this market. And on top of that, we actually created a, a set of a portfolio of products under Cisco Design, 
to really which are really right size and right price for SMEs, right? They, they have access to the, the best technology that's really set up uh, for the SME space. Okay, so if a small business owner just look at the portfolio, do you think they will be confused by all the offerings? Is there any options that we provide to them you know, to give them advice on what they need? Absolutely, and, that, and I think uh, and that's where a good example would be, let's take a secure remote worker. Mm -hmm. I was talking to someone recently about our secure remote worker bundle that we did recently. As we transition now from sort of, you know, from home to the office or somewhere in between, uh, the, the so-called hybrid uh, model that everyone's talking about, we've come up with something called Secure Remote Worker Bundle, which is a combination of cloud, collaboration and security and hardware. Now, that, what that does is it gives the customer the ability to have some people at home, some people in the office, and, in the, and they're still in that secure environment, right? They're still in that secure working environment. They can collaborate. Uh, they're secure, their endpoints are secured, uh, all their devices that are connected to that network are under are secured as well. And in addition to that, we've actually even positioned a, a, a TP unit as well, a desk pro, which is one of our best products in our market, specifically for SME, so that it, they can use our technology in their work environment. Well, that's perfect that small businesses will know how to get started. Right, thanks for coming onto our show, Russ. We know that the past year has been difficult for a lot of small businesses, but thanks to your advice, I'm sure they'll feel more geared on what to come. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Thanks so much.